three household items that might give you cancer. The dangers of cancer still linger close to home. Here are three common household items that may be linked to cancer risk and why you should reconsider having them in your house. Carpets You may have already guessed that as one of the most trafficked areas around the house, carpets can latch on to hundreds of thousands of particles every day. Carpets that are high pile in variety and older than 10 years old can hold on to allergens, pollutants that accumulate over weeks and months. However, newer carpets are said to potentially pose more risks than anticipated. According to the American Lung Association, new carpets and carpet pads are made with special adhesives known as volatile organic compounds. These volatile organic compounds emit odors and chemicals that may be associated with lung damage and potentially cancer development. Volatile organic compounds affect our biochemical pathways by inducing cell death, oxidative stress, and massive inflammation. With too much interference in our normal physiology, volatile organic compounds may potentially play a role behind different types of cancers, ranging from lung to colon, pancreatic, and breast cancer. Numerous scientific reports have suggested a connection between volatile organic compounds and cancer. Released through the urine and feces, volatile organic compounds are chemicals not to be trifled with. But what's the solution to a carpet-free home that desperately demands a welcome mat? The American Lung Association shares these tips with new carpet owners who should be extra careful before installing their new designs. When installing new carpet, request that the carpet is unrolled and aired out in a well-ventilated area, a clean dry warehouse for example, for 72 hours before installation. If possible, have carpet installed while the space is unoccupied. Request the use of glues that are non-toxic and low in volatile organic compounds. Then allow 72 hours of ventilation before inhabiting the space. Make sure the carpet can be removed later without use of toxic chemicals. Even with proper ventilation, you should be cautious about installing rugs or carpets in the damper areas of the house, such as the kitchen and the bathrooms. ALA continues to add, Kitchens, bathrooms, and entryways should always be carpet-free because they are frequently damp providing a good environment for mold. To reduce the amount of dirt and pollutants that are tracked in from outdoors, use durable commercial gray doormats outside entryways. At home, remove shoe upon entry. Imagine a high traffic area like a hallway with people trekking back and forth day in and day out. Tiny debris clings to shoes and clothing, then gets ground deep into the carpet fibers. Months and years of this soil, grease and grime builds up. Young children play on these carpets, accumulating dust on their hands and toys, putting them in their mouths before toxins get swallowed. The tiny volatile organic compound particles emitted from the carpet pads and adhesives contribute to this toxic mix. Warning signs of too much volatile organic compound exposure include headaches, breathing issues, skin rashes, and even cancer. But by properly preparing for new carpet installation, we can avoid these dangers. Alcohol A fun Saturday game night with friends can quickly become less fun if you overdo it on the alcohol. While we may enjoy the occasional drink, alcohol has been associated with increased risks of various cancers, especially of the liver, pancreas, and breast. But why is alcohol potentially so dangerous? Alcohol, known as ethyl alcohol, or just ethanol, is a chemical substance that is produced by the fermentation of sugars by starch. When consumed, alcohol undergoes breakdown into acetaldehyde and acetate, which are highly reactive compounds that can damage DNA and disrupt normal cell processes. Heavy alcohol use over time can destroy liver function, which helps metabolize alcohol's toxic byproducts. So those compounds end up circulating and damaging other tissues instead. However, along with the liver, Alcohol can be metabolized in other various tissues, including the pancreas and the brain. When alcohol particles enter tissues, they can cause damage to the cells and surrounding tissue. Hundreds of studies have been published on the topic of alcohol-induced tissue damage and cancer development. One impressive meta-analysis published in 2014 analyzed nearly half a million cancer cases. After observing 572 studies, 
the meta-analysis concluded that there is a positive association between alcohol consumption and a higher risk of stomach, liver, pancreas, gallbladder, and skin cancer. The most surprising being the high correlation between alcohol intake and the development of oral, pharyngeal, and esophageal cancers. Another meta-analysis published in 2016 made the interesting distinction between the frequency and intensity of alcohol consumption and the different types of cancers. In this meta-analysis, very light alcohol consumption was equal to less than 0.5 drinks a day. Light consumption was equivalent to one drink per day and moderate drinking to one to two alcoholic beverages a day, as shared by the 2016 study. A total of 60 cohort studies from 135 articles were included in the final analysis. Very light drinking or light drinking was not associated with the incidence of most cancers, except for female breast cancer in women and male colorectal cancer. Conversely, light drinking was associated with a decreased incidence of both female and male lung cancer significantly, and both female and male thyroid cancer marginally significantly. Moderate drinking significantly increased the incidence of male colorectal cancer and female breast cancer, whereas it decreased the incidence of both female and male hematologic malignancy. We found that very light or light alcohol drinking was not associated with the risk of most of the common cancers, except for the mild increase in the incidence of breast cancer in women and colorectal cancer in men. Imagine a woman in her 40s who loves happy hour with co-workers. She downs martini almost daily, unaware that she's flooding her system with a chemical cocktail of cell and DNA-destroying compounds. Fast forward a few years, and she develops aggressive liver cancer that could have been prevented by reducing alcohol consumption earlier. So, while a night out with friends can be memorable and fun, we should be cautious about excess alcohol intake and how this common item can give us cancer. Enjoying our content? Show your support by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more health and science insights. Insecticides Many households use organophosphate, based insecticides to control pests. But did you know these chemicals might harm more than just bugs? Organophosphorus insecticides are easy ways to kill any unwanted insects and prevent their spread and risk of insect-borne diseases. These chemicals function by inhibiting the enzyme cholinesterase in the nervous system of insects. As powerful as they are against these tiny beings, organophosphorus insecticides can have detrimental effects on humans as well. New studies show the correlation between exposure to organophosphorus insecticides and increased risks of cancer, including lymphoma and leukemia in children and breast cancer in adults. A study published in 2016 revealed the connections between malathion, the most commonly used organophosphorus insecticides, and the increased risk of thyroid cancer. Diazinon, another variant of the organophosphorus insecticide, was associated with ovarian cancer, the 2016 study shared. We stratified analyses for cancers of the breast, ovary, and uterus based on self-reported menopausal status at enrollment, with 15,144 women classified as premenopausal and 12,216 as postmenopausal. Among postmenopausal women, we observed significantly elevated risk of breast cancer associated with use of any organophosphates. Among women who used diazinon, we observed significantly elevated risk of ovarian cancer among premenopausal women. We observed significant interactions with menopausal status and melethion for ovarian cancer risk and with menopausal status and diazinon for uterine cancer risk. Imagine a family spraying insecticides in their home without any gear or proper precautions because they heard it was relatively safe. In this fictitious example, the pesticides they sprayed quickly get absorbed through their skin and inhaled into their lung. Within hours, the parents develop throbbing migraines and dizziness. Soon, their young daughter complains of a painfully stiff neck and starts convulsing on the floor. By the time the ambulance arrives, she has fallen into a coma. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention offers guidance on recognizing insecticide poisoning and knowing when it is vital to seek immediate medical attention. Symptoms start fastest after organophosphates are breathed. 
and next by eating or drinking contaminated food or water or getting them on your skin. Some symptoms are headache, dizziness, weakness, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, salivation, watery eyes, and small pupils. Severe symptoms are seizures, slow pulse, difficulty breathing, and coma. Long after exposure, people also can develop nervous system problems such as muscle weakness and numbness and tingling of the hands and feet. While the daughter thankfully recovers, she sustains permanent neurological damage from the insecticide exposure. The family warns their friends and neighbors to avoid using these dangerous chemicals. They switch to natural pest control methods like diatomaceous earth, vinegar, and essential oils. Just remember, when dealing with organophosphorus insecticides, it's important to read the instructions carefully. Put on the right protective gear. Make sure you shield your face from those nasty chemicals and don't forget to wash your hands thoroughly. Using the proper protective gear is critical, but even then, you cannot guarantee safety from these nasty chemicals. We must be extremely cautious about bringing these dangerous insecticides into our homes and around our children. Making our home a safe haven goes beyond having proper security and a cozy atmosphere. It's also crucial to reduce or eliminate these household items to lower the risks of cancer development. Thanks everyone for watching. If you learned something new today, consider subscribing and comment down below what you want us to explore next.